Will mergers reshape the media business? According to the Wall Street Journal, Comcast confirmed yesterday it is no longer in the race to pursue movie and television assets from 21st Century Fox, leaving Disney as the only serious bidder. Meanwhile, AT&T gears up for its fight against the Department of Justice over its bid to acquire Time Warner. They say, we want this and we're not going to sell anything to get it. Joining us this morning is AOL co-founder, former CEO, the current chairman and CEO of Revolution, Steve Kay. Steve, it's good to see you. Good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And you were around when we saw the last bout of lots of mergers in media and telecom. And, and, and that was obviously uh, a, a big move for a lot of these companies, making these companies bigger. The $164 billion AOL Time Warner merger was the largest in history. What do you make of the current M&A climate? What are you seeing out there? Well, as you say it, it does feel like deja vu all over again. It's sort of there's a lot of the same discussions that were happening 20 years ago about the role of content versus distribution. Do you need to be integrated? In particular, the, the battle back then was a debate between is content king or is distribution king. It's pretty clear that the consumer is king, and the platforms, whether it be Amazon or, or Netflix or Facebook, that have direct connections to consumers are the ones that are advantaged. And as a result, Disney's basically saying they're going to pull back from Netflix and do their own direct-to-consumer offering. I think they're trying to bulk up, whether it be a the Fox assets or other assets to have a credible offering to, to go directly to consumers. So in some ways, it's a similar battle to you know, what we were hearing uh, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? So you think the consumer is king, but once again, people are really bidding up content because, you know, I mean, look at Amazon right now. I mean, it's a little different. And, and by the way, I can't believe it was 20 years ago. You're right, it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Amazon willing to pay up billions and billions of dollars for original content. Is that where this is going, where people are going to start doing a more original content? Or do you think the sale of established content, for example, Fox, The Simpsons, you know, uh, so many uh, great shows, This Is Us, uh, among those being talked about, is that where the, where the value is? Well, I think the value, as I said, is, is with the, the services that have direct-to-consumer offerings. So how do you bundle together something that's credible, which is a mix of brands and, and content that people are already familiar with, as well as some original content? Again, this is not a, a new idea. HBO 30, 40 years ago really was, was pioneering that. How do they leverage some of the movies that are already made but invest in original content, Sopranos or other kinds of things to, to differentiate? So we're continuing to see that, that move forward. The only difference is now there's some new companies that didn't exist 20 years ago, uh, Netflix and Amazon, Facebook. Facebook, et cetera, Apple as well, that existed but wasn't really focused so much on, on, on media content. So there's, the, the battle will continue, and the ones that really have that, that consumer uh, connection, the direct consumer connection, are likely going to be the winners. And those companies have their own investment arms. I mean, you look like an Amazon. It's, it's acquiring. It's got an investment arm acquiring technology companies. Let's talk about the fight over net neutrality. I mean, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak and the man known as the father of the Internet, Vint Cerf, are leading a new push to prevent the FCC vote on Thursday. The group of Internet experts are calling on Congress to stop the FCC from overturning rules that prevent Internet providers from throttling or outright blocking online content. Your thoughts? Yeah. It's also is an is a old debate. It's sort of like that Prince song from 1999. There was the debates in the 90s around open access. Now the debate is around net neutrality. And at the core, it's how do you create a, a, the Internet as a platform for innovation, particularly allow disruptive startups, entrepreneurs all over the country uh, to start innovating and not just have the incumbents kind of lock down their, their, their leads. So I'm very concerned about net neutrality. I share the view of, of, uh, of some of the people who wrote this week saying we need to make sure the Internet remains open for, for innovation and we err on the side of making sure things are tilted in favor of those disruptors, those entrepreneurs that are really trying to launch new things, not, not the existing incumbents trying to kind of protect their lead.